The subject of today's video can quite literally wipe out all of humanity. We're probably fine for a while, though. Hi there, and welcome to Gimme2. My name is Mark, and in this video, we will be discussing volcanoes in just two minutes. As with my other videos, if you're interested in going straight to the two minutes, which discusses how volcanoes form and different kinds of volcanoes and their characteristics, that is timestamped in the description. But if you stick around for a couple of minutes before that, I go through some volcanic context that might be worth a listen. Volcanoes are openings in the Earth's surface that provide a window into the inside of our planet. To understand why they exist and how they work, it's first important to understand our planet's structure. At the center of the Earth is the very solid and very hot core. Surrounding the core is the mostly solid mantle, the upper level of the mantle and the outermost layer of the Earth's surface, called the crust, together make up a rigid planetary shell called the lithosphere. This shell is broken and is made up of a number of pieces, called tectonic plates, that can move toward each other, away from each other, or side by side. Volcanoes often form where tectonic plates meet. There are, however, hotspot volcanoes, like the Hawaiian Islands, that form in the middle of tectonic plates. This happens when hot molten rock, called mantle plumes, rise to the surface in the middle of plates and seep through the cracks. There are close to 1,500 active terrestrial volcanoes, and 75% of those are found on faults in and surrounding the Pacific Ocean in what we call the Ring of Fire. This area accounts for over 90% of Earth's volcanic eruptions. Volcanic activity has formed many of the Earth's landforms and brings high nutrient soil deposits that continue to sustain life. On the other hand, volcanoes can be absolutely devastating, with some of the largest volcanic eruptions providing some of the most devastating forces in Earth's history. There are roughly 50 to 60 annual volcanic eruptions. Eruptions can result in the flow of molten rock called lava, as well as the explosion of gas and ash high into the air, and a dangerous flowing mix of pulverized rock and ash called pyroclastic flow that can race down the slopes of the volcanoes. Volcanic material can also mix with water, creating devastating mudflows called lahars. Not all eruptions, however, are created equal. A classification system, called the Volcanic Explosivity Index, is used to measure the strength of volcanic eruptions. The weakest eruptions, ranked VEI0, are relatively common and often continuous, with minimal ejection of volcanic material into the air. While no official upper limit, the highest recorded VEI is 8, although no eruption of that magnitude has occurred in recent human history. VEI-8 eruptions are extremely explosive and are even capable of blocking out the sun across vast distances, triggering volcanic winters, which have even been linked to ice ages. The VEI index measures the explosivity based on the volume and the height of the material ejected during the eruption. The scale is logarithmic, meaning that each successive number is 10 times more powerful than the rating below it. Now that we have a foundational understanding of volcanoes, let's get to the two minutes which talks about how they form and some different volcanic varieties. Before we do, however, if you find this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, please consider hitting that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel to stay current on other releases. It really does help the channel grow and allows videos like these to reach broader audiences. But back to volcanoes, so let's get those two minutes started now. The Earth's mantle is mostly solid, but heat from the core causes certain areas to melt. This molten rock, called magma, rises and gathers in chambers below the surface. If one of these chambers builds enough pressure, the magma can erupt through vents in the surface, becoming lava. How it erupts depends on the kind of volcano. Shield volcanoes form when magma with low viscosity seeps through the surface. The molten rock composition produces runny, mafic lava that spreads over far distances before hardening, giving these volcanoes wide, gentle slopes that resemble shields. If magma is gaseous, it can add pressure to the chamber when the gas expands. 
This can push magma through the vents in the surface with explosive force. These eruptions shoot ash high into the air and eject crumbled rock called pyroclasts and thick gummy felsic lava that moves slowly down the mountainside, building on each other close to the volcano's crater. This creates a much steeper sloping mountain called a composite or stratovolcano. Less common volcanoes include cinder cones, which are explosive and eject volcanic debris called cinder or scoria, and lava domes with slow-moving lava that accumulates near the vent, forming domes. After significant eruptions, empty magma chambers can collapse, resulting in depressions in the Earth's surface called calderas. Large calderas are often associated with supervolcanoes that have magma chambers large enough to produce VEI-8 or higher eruptions. Finally, there are mid-ocean ridges. These underwater volcanoes form when magma rises between diverging tectonic plates, solidifying into oceanic crust. And that is the rundown on different kinds of volcanoes. I found it very informative researching the information for this video, and I hope that I was able to deliver the information clearly to you. If you did enjoy this, I hope you're able to join me in another video. Thanks so much for watching.